Hi guys, welcome to a new video. My name is Rinu Karajaram and I'm here today with all the tips and tricks to my long hair. Okay you guys, so I have been getting a lot a lot of questions throughout the years from a lot of people what I have been putting in my hair and how am I able to grow it so long and why is my hair so thick? Why not go ahead and film a video on um, my tips and tricks that I have been uh, using for a very long time now and how I've been taking care of my long hair. It takes a bit of effort to care for such long hair and not want to put it up in a bun every single day. So I have a few small tips to share with you guys. Um, I think most of these tips uh, you might already know but I am just sharing what works for me. Let's start with the length of my hair because right now my hair is just above my butt. If I turn around you can see that my hair is quite long um, it really covers my whole back for the majority of my childhood I had really short hair just around a bob uh, because my mom also had a bob and we were always twinning with our hair um, but I think when I was able to make my own decisions I really wanted to grow it out and yeah here we are today so the first thing this is a very well known tip do not use a lot of heat on your hair and it might seem very obvious and straightforward but too much heat on your hair can really damage it and um, make your ends really brittle and cause a lot of split ends so minimizing the, the amount of heat you use on your hair will already make your hair a lot better naturally my hair is already uh, quite straight uh, so after the shower i do not blow dry my hair i just let it air dry and then it already falls uh, yeah semi straight actually and i might have a little bit of frizz but I uh, tamed that with a serum or a hair oil to uh, get rid of the excess frizz. So there are of course a lot of heating tools out there that are a bit modern in technology and are, are not as hot. Um, and then I'm referring actually to a few videos ago where I reviewed the Dyson Airwrap. I bought that one since December last year and I've been already I've already been using it for six months now, five six months, uh, and I really really enjoy it. I do have it right here. I did want to mention this in the video because the heat on this tool is much less than you would normally get from a straightener or an iron. Um, it is an investment. It's quite a big investment to purchase one of these, but you basically get all tools in one from um, a curler to um, a straightener to a round brush attachment so and even a blow dry attachment so you can do a lot of things with this um, but yeah if you use um, a heating tool please be cautious be careful and yeah maybe look at altern alternatives to uh, yeah not use it as much because there are a lot of techniques you can use to um, curl your hair uh, without heat so yeah when you can avoid heat please do but uh, yeah, what I've been doing for years is basically not blow drying my hair after the shower. After my shower, I put my hair in a towel. So then the second tip is using a serum. So after you come out of the shower, put the serum in your ends, not on your head because yeah, it will get oily uh, quickly, but disperse it throughout your hair, focus on the ends, and then put your hair up in a towel to uh, dry for a little bit. Make sure your scalp is really dry and then let it air dry naturally. So the three serums that I've been using kind of mixed um, separately from each other. The first one is this one from L'Oreal. It's the L'Oreal El Vive Extraordinary Oil. I really like this one. Uh, it gives a really nice shine and this is specifically uh, for good for colored hair. Two years back I got my hair uh, colored. I got a balayage done, very subtle but it is still a little bit in my hair, you cannot see it much because it is very subtle, but yeah. I am going to cut my hair and uh, get highlights done uh, really soon, so I'll film that too because I'm getting quite a bit trimmed off. This is number one that I've been using. It is okay, um, it does not really um, moisturize your hair maybe as much as 
um, a normal natural oil but it will give your hair uh, a really good shine so that is nice and it gets rid of the, the frizz then the second one that I've been using and this is just drugstore you guys so uh, this is the Loving Blend from Garnier and it's a repairing serum so that is this one this I really loved it because it's empty and this one doesn't make your hair really oily or greasy it's very light on the hair I love the effect this one gives. So then my third serum that I've been loving is this one. The BioSilk Silk Therapy. You guys, a big bottle will last you for years. Because the thing is, um, you need a really, really, really small amount of um, this serum. Because it is very thick. And I can show you. See, it's a very thick serum. A little bit goes a really long way. But what I love about this, it coats the hair in such a nice way and makes it so so shiny it works perfect yeah after you have styled your hair or after you've come out of the shower so you can really use this um, for multiple purposes and it gives you such a nice shine the shine it has given me so yeah the bio silk silk therapy is one of my staple in uh, my daily hair care hair styling routine so then i want to talk about something that I feel like not everybody talks about, but that is your hairbrush. Yes, you guys, a hairbrush can make a really big difference because some hairbrushes really pull your hair and cause breakage because of the bristles and how they are formed, they can really damage your hair. So my brush that I've been using also for quite a few years that has made a tremendous amount of difference with untangling my hair but also making sure that it doesn't break. This baby has been in my life for about three years now. It looks perfectly fine still and this really uh, changed up the way um, yeah, my hair looks after I brush it because it doesn't create any frizz or uh, you know when your hair gets a bit static I'm not sure if that's the right word but it kind of poofs up this doesn't do that for me so yeah, this is really one of the brushes that I also use when I come out of the shower and I want to brush out my, um, my hair and then the second brush that I've been using is this one. It's from Dyson. I got that with my uh, Dyson when I bought it. But the thing is, um, yeah, you don't need to uh, purchase a really expensive brush. I got this for free with my Dyson. So I've been using it and I've been loving it. But the most important part is these particles right here. The, the little hairs of the brush that poke out. It should not be too hard. And you, it needs to be spaced out enough because some brushes i don't know but it it um it tangles your hair even more and when you brush through it uh you basically break the hair and so again the brushes is my next tip and even more important tip is the way you brush your hair you guys i have been seeing a lot of ladies brush their hair really wrong so what i have been seeing what is wrong is that people start brushing their hair from the top of their hair down. I'm not sure why people brush their hair from like up down. I'm not sure yeah why why you would do that. Simply because just imagine your hair having a knot right here. So when you are brushing your hair downwards you're basically dragging the knot down and even if you have more knots in your hair you basically kind of tighten everything and then brush through it causing a lot of breakage so what you should do the right way to brush your hair take your hair from the bottom what i do i always I'm, I'm not sure but this is just the way i do it i'm not sure if it's weird but i basically lay my hair back against my arm and i start brushing from the ends so from the ends bit by bit i go up and what you do with this technique is if there are any tangle or knots, you basically are brushing it up from the bottom. And if you go up, you basically tackle, you tackle tangle by tangle. So you're not essentially dragging down the knots and creating more knots. So yeah, this is really, really key. Especially if you have hair that uh, tangles easily. The number four would be cutting your hair. And I know, I know the feeling of wanting to grow out your hair. It doesn't feel right and you want to 
keep every little inch on this um, there to kind of uh, give you that length trust me cut your hair every three to four months that's the best as your dead hair and that ends uh, it gets longer the ends are a lot more brittle because they are old essentially what happens when you do not cut your hair you do not cut those split ends off so with time those split ends they will rise up the hair and with you not taking good care brushing from up um, using a lot of heat on your hair it will cause the split ends to creep up and what happens then is that the bottom part of your hair it really starts thinning out a lot my ends are usually your ends are always a bit thinner than the rest of your hair but I think you can already see it with my hair see my ends are a lot thinner than the upper part of my hair cut your hair every three to four months get like a few inches cut off and when you cut off those ends it will look a lot more healthy and when your hair grows in it stays thick and that will give an appearance of your hair being a lot more healthy and thick so yeah tip number five and <laughs> i know you have heard this probably a lot of times <laughs> drinking water you guys it is so important to get um hydration in your system because if you do not hydrate your your body enough your scalp will also be affected because it will be dry it can cause dandruff um, dryness hair falling out the hairs that are growing growing out of your head won't be as healthy as when you are nourished enough i think for most of us about two to three liters um yeah it should be our daily intake and i'm guilty of not drinking enough water but i'm working on it so that's the important thing right for hair scrunchies what kind of hair ties are you using i would say a big no-no to the hair ties with the metallic part in between because a lot of hair gets caught in there where it breaks your hair especially when you're tying your hair really tight and that can cause a lot of damage one of the hair ties i would recommend is something like this i think the the original one is the bubble yeah, if i'm correct uh, and yeah this one is this one is not from bubble i do have a few from bubble itself but yeah these are basically knit spiral they do not have any metallic in them they really stretch out far but because of the the spiral effect it really keeps your hair in place because it goes in between each hair but otherwise i would um, recommend you to use a hair tie that does not have any metallic part so it's like an infinite band and when I'm talking about the hairband, I also want to um, talk a little bit about how are you sleeping with your hair because I think some of us do like to sleep with our hair open. I'm not sure if everybody does, uh, but leaving your hair open at night, it also creates a lot of friction, which can cause breakage, plus it will create a lot of frizz. So when you wake up the next morning, your hair might be a lot more frizzy than you, you know, you wouldn't want it but that's because you left your hair open put your hair in a small bun a loose bun braid it and in that way you will create less damage also while you're sleeping then i want to discuss my very very last tip that i have with you and that is all about the hair oil yes i think you guys knew that this was coming it is a really important routine for me and i try to oil my hair as much as i can if you want healthy good looking hair it's about nourishing from the inside so with water but also from the outside and that will be taking care of that scalp as the scalp is where all the hairs are growing so there are a few oils that i have loved over the years almond oil castor oil coconut oil i use coconut oil as a mix with the castor and almond oil because coconut oil on its own I do not really like it for um, my hair, it, it makes my scalp a little bit itchy and I, I do not like it uh, as much on its own. You can also use olive oil, but the castor oil and almond oil are my true favorites. Coconut oil I use as a mixing oil. It does have good benefits, so I would recommend it, but you have to kind of feel out what works for you. Almond oil, nonetheless, I really like on its own. I think uh, it's not too thick. It absorbs quickly in the hair. And so, as I mentioned, castor oil. This is the 
castor oil, castor oil, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. This is a very, very, very thick oil, so I'm not sure if I can show you the consistency, but definitely not as liquidy as an almond oil, like I can show you, see? I bought this one in India when I was there, but you can just buy any uh, natural or cold press almond oil really good. Almond oil is really good to strengthen, soften and condition the hair and I definitely think it does those for me. One part uh, coconut, one part of this or one part almond and one part of the castor oil and it does wonders. Mix it in and put it in your hair. So uh, for my last trip to India I picked up a new one and this is from the brand Induleka. It is hard because here in the Netherlands the temperature is a lot colder than India so that already states to me that the base oil in this is coconut oil because coconut oil uh, solidifies at colder temperatures. Press on it and on each little spike the oil will drop out. So you can basically go like that and put the oil in your hair. So that's really cool. This is a Ayurvedic hair oil and it is mainly to stimulate hair growth. So for my peeps in India and maybe in the UK, I think you guys can find this one. Just look for this in the supermarket, you will find it. Um, but yeah, it is not so important. The oils that I just mentioned to you are really great. Um, and what you can do is take a, take a bottle that you usually use for your hair coloring and empty it out and fill it with oil. And with that, you can also very precisely apply the oil to your hair. I think in the dollar store, you can find those empty bottles also. Yeah, put it in that and apply it directly to your scalp. I want to give you a little bit of explanation on how to apply this to your hair. Yeah, the very basic instructions we get usually on a uh, conditioning uh, packet does not work the same, of course, for hair oil. The minimum would be to leave in uh, the oil for one to two hours, but the best thing is to do it right before you go to bed uh, and really soak your scalp in the oil, put a lot of oil in your hair, massage your head, for about 10 minutes and really get that blood flow. Put something on your cushion, sleep with the oil in, let it absorb the whole night, and then go ahead and wash it out the next morning. Those were all my tips in regards to um, getting long hair and letting it grow out. I do want to say that uh, you can definitely work on getting your hair more healthy and better looking. Um, but at the end of the day, you are born with thick hair or you're not. You can improve it tremendously by using the tips that I shared with you. But yeah, just keep in mind, just a small reminder that... So yeah, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. Even if you're not so sure what to use for your hair or for your hair type, I'm always open to share my knowledge. I'm of course no professional, but I'm just sharing what I know. Give it a big thumbs up, subscribe for more videos, and I hope to see you in my next one. So till then, stay happy. Mwah.